Life's too short to drive boring cars. The Porsche 911, an absolutely magnificent piece. Yes, it harkens back many, many decades, and it's actually been in further development year on year on year to the point of where we're now amongst near perfection. So you have to ask the question, have there been any flops? Has the Porsche 911 always been the perfect sports car? Well, the long and short of it is no. There have been a few duds along the way, and I wanna share with you the worst single-handedly 911 of all time. Let's get into it now. So right here, we're looking at the brand new Porsche 911. It's a 992 generation, and clearly it's the best and latest of the breed. Features a three liter twin turbo six, and of course, it puts down serious performance numbers. You can still get it in a manual, or you can as well get it in the double clutch PDK transmission. Would you say this is the worst Porsche of all time? No, not me, but this one is right here. This is undoubtedly the worst Porsche 911 in history. And so why is that? I've personally owned many Porsches in my day, and I think a lot of them are great, some better than others. I personally love the high revving GT3 series or even the turbos, which I've owned. Yeah. But even a good old fashioned, naturally aspirated flat six engine with a manual gearbox is a delight to own. So what is it about this pig that makes this thing so undesirable and literally the worst car of history within the 911s? Well, first of all, let's say this is a Porsche 996. And 996 is the first attempt by Porsche to inject water cooling or incorporate water cooling into their engine designs. Of course, before that, it was all oil and air cooled. What do you mean? But this one here, now they integrated with an actual water pump and a proper cooling system that you would find in any other car, like a Mercedes, for example. But that's not where it went wrong, because today, Porsches are still using water cooling, so that in itself isn't the failure point. But this is the 996, and there's a few reasons. Right here. So what we are looking at is the Boxster-style headlights. Of course, you see the kidney, and this is a very controversial piece. So this represents the 996 generation of 911, and again, many enthusiasts very, very much disliked this 996 when it came out just because of that very reason. <laughs> in fact, it was such a big flop, they went back to this style around her headlight in the following model, which was the 997 generation. Now, it's not just those headlights that made this car the worst on history in the 911 world. If you look at the panels along the side, go down here and you'll see there's very, very little flare happening here. Matter of fact, swing to the back and you'll find it doesn't have as pronounced a rear fender flare that you find typically in a lot of the more recent versions of the 911. Even the outgoing 993 generation had more pronounced flaring. So they called it the slab sided 911 because it looked like a slab. It was almost a flat straight side and really the Porsche went sideways with this. They lost their identity. They were starting to veer off the tracks for their styling and enthusiasts just did not love this car. No. I mean, like many enthusiasts, they always put their money down, they buy the next greatest, hoping for the next greatest, but this wasn't it. So looking here is the next reason why the Porsche 911 was horrifyingly bad in this generation. And what we're looking at here, because it's a rear engine with the transmission in front of it, this is a rear wheel drive version. Of course, all power going to the rear wheels. The engine hanging out the back isn't the problem because all 911s have traditionally been rear engine. The real problem is that engine. It's a modular style engine. It's not a true dry sump engine like you typically had in the outgoing air-cooled and oil-cooled cars. This now is an integrated dry sump, almost something you would find on a BMW M5 or an M3. It's not a true separate dry sump system. But that in itself also isn't the total disaster because lacking the dry sump system on this meant that if you put ultra sticky tires on this car and took it to the track, it would void your engine warranty because the dry sump system in this was inadequate to provide enough oiling to the engine under hard corners. But again, not in itself the worst reason for this engine being the worst engine. This started out as a 3.4 liter when it came out in 1999, and then they soon transitioned that up to a 3.6 liter, making 325 horsepower from the original 300 horse in the 3.4. That in itself, again, is not the sole failure reason. What it is, is they had the IMS bearing issues, which were prevalent in this generation of 911, and it's that intermediate shaft bearing that could potentially and would potentially let go, thus creating a catastrophic environment and your engine going boom. No. So many enthusiasts really referred to it as the ticking time bomb, 
because you didn't know. You didn't know if you had a high mileage car, low mileage car. You didn't know when or where. And all of a sudden, rattle, rattle, bang, and it would go kaboom. That also afflicted some of the mid-level Boxsters. It also afflicted some of the earlier generation 997. So just to be aware, but eventually they started in incorporating a better bearing setup in later versions. But there's literally another reason inside why this is the worst 911 in history. Let's take a look. So first of all, this generation did not look like the best quality interior. The 996, they put together with a lot of extra plastic and it was a big, it was a big change from the 911 world where they often had a lot of leather wrapped dashboards and just general higher quality feel. This car had a lower level finishing and left a lot of customers very dissatisfied. But there's another reason on the inside of this vehicle, but it's kind of outside, inside, a little bit of both, why this is literally one of the worst 911s of all time. And it's that little stick on the floor. Do you see that? That's right. It's called the Tiptronic. And the Tiptronic is essentially Porsche's version of a wet style torque converter type transmission. Yes, it's almost the same as driving a Mercedes or a big luxury car. It doesn't have the, the real feel of an engaged vehicle. It doesn't have the manual transmission. So while it's shiftable, it's not like driving a manual gearbox. It also isn't nearly as good as the as the transmission that Porsche replaced it with, which is called the PDK, which is the double clutch transmission, which came along in the 991 generation of the 911. The PDK or manual are the way to go, but this car equipped with the automatic Tiptronic is literally the worst driving experience in a Porsche 911. So guess what? You'd never believe it, but there is another reason. This is literally the worst 911 in history. But let's take a quick look at a couple other 911s to give you some point of reference. So the Porsche 911 in its purest form always comes in a coupe. As you see here, you get the lines that just flow gracefully there. Of course, it blends in with the rear flares and it all just sort of amalgamates into one beautiful sculpted piece. This is the truest 911 form in the coupe. Most people would argue that that is the case. Very few people could argue against that. The 911 coupe, as we see right here, is truly the best iteration and body style of the Porsche 911, such as in this 911 Carrera S. <laughs> and then there's the 911 Cabriolet, which was another popular body style. Of course, for those particular in California or a lot of sunny climates, enjoy having a car like this, where you could literally pull the roof down. While the lines didn't look quite as graceful as they did in the coupe, it does give you a nice look. With the roof down, you still have the back seats and you have the open air motoring. So it was a nice compromise for people that enjoyed the experience of wind through the hair, the sound of the engine right behind you, and just the overall look of the car with the roof down does look pretty spanky. But this is where that other car goes right off the rails. So then you're looking at this car and you're probably thinking, wow, it looks like a coupe, but there's something kind of sort of missing here. And I mean, you've got this big sunroof, which looks kind of interesting and intriguing. And you follow the lines down at the back and then, oh, you stop right there and you see this awkward piece here. And you have to think, well, what is that all about? When that other 911 was a very nice, smooth, graceful finish there, this one here has this weird, peculiar line right there. Well, the main reason for that is, is it because it's a Targa and it's a Targa top meant to actually be partial open roof, partial coupe, but really has this whole identity <laughs> going on here. And because this is a Targa, you'll notice the overall flow of the car just isn't quite the same. And that, in this case, is why the purest 911 lover would not opt for the Targa. Now, with that said, I mean, everybody has different choices. Everybody has different thoughts around that. And clearly somebody felt this was the car to buy when it was new. Either there was a great salesman that told them, hey, this is what you need. Or they just said, hey, I want something with a partial open air experience without going full convertible, worrying about maybe leaks and seal problems and issues like that. So this is a more rigid structure. And of course, you have less issues with replacing rag tops or rear plastic windows after the fact. But now we're getting fussy. So I just wanted to share with you today about which truly is the worst variation. And this probably is the worst combination. What? But as far as 911s go, 911 is like a pizza, right? Even crappy pizza is still pretty good, right? So <laughs> even the worst of the worst 911s is still a pretty good driving experience. It's still fun, frivolous, has the overall look and appearance and gets you the clout that you're looking for. So at the end of the day, the Porsche 996 Targa, equipped with the Tiptronic, really is one of the worst cars you'll ever drive in a 911 world. And if you're in the market for a new Porsche 911, maybe something slightly used like this, then you probably care when this high car cost bubble is actually going to burst. Check that video, it's going to share a whole lot of that information with you. 
Hope to see you real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.